The following is an Operation Podcast production. Creating a culture of love. I've always been concerned, but like I'm getting even more concerned because now I'm going to see it firsthand yeah. and the impacts of social media and being on. You don't even have to be in the spotlight. You, no. It could be the thousand people that follow you. It doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. like, what are the things that we should be looking out for? A, as men and fathers and peers and you in the mentorship role. Like, what can we start saying to these these young girls and young boys? I was choosing me, but it was still hard to do that when you have everyone associating you with something for so long. We're like taught to keep it secretive, but then that's how we don't know how to demand and like ask for our worth. Like we don't know what we're worth. The audience wants to know, I'm sure everyone asks you the same question. And I am going to ask you this. Okay. What is it like (laughs) working with Beyonce? Yeah. I mean, you know how I, I get why people ask it. I want to know what it's like working with other people. So Mm -hmm. I completely understand. Um, and it's very fair. Like we want to know what these superstars are really like. And, you know, I started working with Beyonce so very young. Mm. I don't know if you know how young I was. I was 17 years old. So still a child technically. Um, So she's definitely been a huge like impact on the way I work and like my work ethic and yeah, just has like, has a big influence on my work ethic Mm -hmm. and and the way I am. So she's been incredible to work with because she is not Beyonce for no reason, you know, like you can learn so, so much just from being in a room with her, not even her talking directly to you. But I've had many moments of her directly dropping gems, you Mm -hmm. know? So I'm a sponge in everything. I want to soak it up and learn from it and add it to myself and my values however I can. So it's been incredible working with her. Yeah, and I think what's cool about it, because I look up to other artists and other people, and I'm like, what would it be like to be in that room? What would it be like to create with them? Because at the end of the day, you're creating with her, yeah, right? And you bring your own flavor and your own art. And you're there for a reason. Yeah, 100%. And a part of the the value and the quality and the, you know, the history mm-hmm. being made, which is so cool and iconic. And I feel like now I'm at this space where I can finally, like, look back and, and revisit it and relive it a little bit, yeah. you know, because it's so hard to when you're, like, in it. Yeah, when you're in it, now you can look back, reflect, unpack it a little, yeah, be like, ooh. like, reflection is not something I used to be good at, but we're doing a lot of it these days. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. well, we'll dig into that a little bit. What is one lesson, the main lesson or the key takeaway that you would say you learned mm. in those moments, in those interactions? You said you were a sponge. Yeah. I think my biggest thing, and I feel like this is why I still to this day like work so hard is learning how to never settle and outdo yourself Mm. always you know like there is no made it no you know there is no um comfortable Mm -mm. there is no complacency it's always growth it's always evolve it's always you know outdoing your last Mm -hmm. greatness so no, I That's love that. That's probably the biggest thing because she's a crazy Virgo who has somehow outdone herself on every single thing. It's just so impressive. And it's like... And that's the thing that we get to look up to be inspired by, right? It's Absolutely. Many people that I know, even at times myself, is like, you quote unquote make it or got the project and you take your foot off the gas. I know. And then all of a sudden you're six months behind where you were. Where you were. And then it just gets more and more behind. It's crazy. Yeah. You have to floor that bitch. Yeah, you gotta you keep know? going. Yeah. So that's that's the way I like work and think is mm-hmm. like foot on the pedal. Yeah. So follow up question, right? Beyonce launches this tour. The yeah. Renaissance tour, uh-huh. right? And <laughs> most people are like, "Dude, Ashley's jumping on. She's the captain. Yeah, she's looking for me. She's the like, head of the ship." Yeah. And you took a stance, and you're like, "No, I'm doing the next thing." So, what yeah. was that next evolution of Ashley? But what was the thought process? Because I'm sure you had some internal dialogue that was like, 
oh shit, am I really saying no? Am I really going to do this? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of like pressures from outside sources, social media, of course, the beehive alone, Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's its own, it's, a, its own thing. Um, so of course I felt that pressure and I felt the eyes and I felt the attention, but I really tried to like stay true to my gut. Mm. And like myself and, you know, the last time we went on tour was 2018 and then we went through an entire global pandemic, oh, yeah. you know, so it's been 2023, five years since that last tour. And a lot has changed in the world with me personally mm -hmm. and just like business wise in general, you know, so I had to consider a lot more things than just like my personal or selfish feelings or even just like outside pressure mm -hmm. you know there's like a lot more at stake now mm -hmm. than um there used to be so that was like really the biggest i guess juggle um but it was in a way easy because i was choosing me but it was still hard to mm. do that when you have everyone associating you with something for so long yeah like your identity is attached yeah to that one thing that was your past yeah and sometimes you're held like you're not allowed to evolve i society doesn't want you to it's like they want you to stay like whatever they have learned of you through and, mm -hmm. and from they want you to stay there don't you dare like jump out of that box it's uncomfortable so keep them you know they want to like smush you down it mm -hmm, almost feels mm -hmm. like so yeah, I but I won't like allow that. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 y'all not about yeah, to you're like, suffocate me. Hold on, like <laughs> we got to break free and like continue to grow. So also being in that space, right? There's a lot of negative media and just hearsay and gossip. How much of that was like, oh, they had a fallen out. Oh, there's oh some God. drama. Oh and how God. do you deal with some of that? Like mentally keeping your fortitude. I mean, knowing for me personally, knowing that all of it, most of it is like bullshit, yeah. <laughs> like that's how I can stay sane. But it is just a lot because people will make up anything. They will take any little thing and run with it. And it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's crazy. But, you know, the way you can sleep good at night is knowing that you like are doing right in the world and like you have made smart and positive decisions and it's not that's not the mm -hmm. reality of it you know and i think she like cleared that up finally when i uh and i cleared it up even when i did my interview but when she called me out when i did go to the concert she was like we got ashley in the house love you ashley yeah. and it was like great everybody can shut up now because there's no beef and she made it clear even though i she didn't make it clear to the world mm -hmm. but she made it clear to me that she supported whatever i wanted to do and so. that's all that matters yeah right the worst of the world is just a bunch of noise yeah absolutely. and it's also like let's dive into resilience here because all this is really thinking about we all have these rackets and these noises and maybe we're not on the global super stage or maybe we're not in the news and it could just be me at school yeah and my school homies and all of a sudden you have that kind of stuff but if we're talking to the future right the little girls and the little boys that are dealing with this and dealing with social media mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you practice by being in the industry for 17 plus years to flex that resilience to grow mm -hmm. it to get stronger to quiet the noise Ooh, you know, I really try and stay out of comments a lot, like with social media, even when I post, I'll, I'll like positive comments and interact for engagement because mm -hmm. that's what we got to do. Yeah. It's a business, but, um, I, I'm not about to go back and forth with anybody. Mm -mm. I know that <laughs> I'm not the one I'm not about to do it because it's just trolling in, in general. And, you know, for the most part, all they want is a response out of you and mm -hmm. a negative one. They want to get under your skin. Mm -hmm. So I try and stay out of the negative comments and don't interact with them. And I really just try and keep my mental health as positive and healthy as it can be, which for me requires balance. It requires, you know, a work life and, you know, personal life being balanced and healthy and working out and eating right. And, you know, all of that being balanced, which is a constant practice. Yeah. <laughs> now, was there a time where you would engage a little bit? 
Maybe you got defensive. Maybe oh, you weren't I mean, as strong. There, there's like, been like moments where I've even like liked a comment accidentally or like liked a post accidentally because it's a picture and I'm like, pretty picture. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. didn't read whatever was down there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I've I've gotten like a little caught up, but not necessarily engaging or like going back and forth mm-hmm. or arguing. I've never been that girl online. Because yeah. <laughs> I know I've seen some comments or even I'll have an ad for a t-shirt and people will do comments on it i'm like you really have n- nothing else to do in life nothing but to do else this to do. it's just like hackers and scammers like that's and what I'm, they live to do it's wild and i'm like i just want to give you a hug like I don't yeah you need a hug it's sad pray for mm-hmm. them you have you've been dancing you've been acting you have a physical art practice yeah but over the years how has that craft evolved how have your passions changed mm-hmm. and and what are you doing with either the fan base you created or the foundation you laid out into your next endeavors? So, you know, the pandemic was a big shift for me because that was the first time I ever really was allowed to sit down at home and everybody was and not feel like we're missing out on anything because, you know, it's always go, go, go on to the next. Mm -hmm. So that was super like transformative. I got to spread my eggs out into many different baskets and just like explore other interests that Mm -hmm. like really excited me that I have never done before and always wanted to learn and, you know, maybe touched on a little bit and wanted to like get more, you know, knowledge on it. So I've done that. Um, For example, (laughs) hosting is one thing that I've started doing. Mm -hmm. I just recently this past weekend hosted um, a panel at a convention called Curly Con. So it was all curly Curly girls and guys. Yeah, all I had there. a friend there. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you had more than one because there's so <laughs> many of us. Um, and then what else? I've been doing a lot of commercials, which interestingly, I feel like has filled that void, filled that like dance gap that Mm -hmm. I am because I'm not dancing as much I'm still dancing a lot like I dance on the mass singer I've been on that since season three we just finished season 11 Mm. so like very consistently doing that but like no one really knows I'm doing that because I'm in a mask and it's great it's sag it's like we get residuals it's just great I get to sleep in my own bed every night it's amazing but then besides that I've been doing commercials I um just had a Pepsi commercial come out this year home goods um I did a Nissan commercial last year. I have a progressive one coming out. And I feel like that has been keeping me in this like commercial industry Mm -hmm. where I feel like I'm working with other celebrities and, you know, artists and stuff like that. But now instead of me like being their dancer, I'm like their star, their co-star, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So it's like very nice to drink a Pepsi with Bad Bunny and, you know, like yeah. do a kick step with Kid and Play and stuff like that. Like it's Instead just, of being behind them. Doing yeah. A- and, and they're like, oh, we want Ashley in this commercial. It's not like, oh, we want that dancer again. What's her name? You mm-hmm, know, like mm-hmm. it's nice. I'm stepping into my own. So and I feel like I'm also very much entering my like mentor, like share what you've learned, mm. guidance, um, experienced veteran, you know, season. It's yeah. like you can share, share some wisdom now. Share my wisdom. Yeah. I feel I'm feeling that shift. So I'm leaning into it. Mm-hmm. I'm not ignoring the signs. I'm just leaning in and I'm really enjoying the ride. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of social media stuff too, which is great. And you know, lots of different forms of income because that's how you become a millionaire. Yeah. You hey, gotta keep people. it going, keep it growing. Yeah. So <laughs> so let's talk about the balance of ego, right? Because in many cases you are an artist, you are a creator, but you're in the background. Yeah. Right. A lot of times. And mm-hmm. different layers of the background and mm-hmm. or there's a hundred dancers with you. One hundred percent. So how how were you balancing ego and balancing being a star or being the captain or being the lead and then transitioning to now where you're actually becoming more of that forefront? Mm-hmm. What has been the difference in that conversation within yourself? Mm. Wow, that's a deep one. You know, it's the more I like live and like progress in life, I feel like I've always had like that leadership quality Mm -hmm. in me and I didn't always tap into it as often but that explains why I was titled the dance captain at 19 and everybody else was older than me and I was the dance captain you know Mm -hmm. and continued to be until 
this year, you know? So I've always had that like leadership quality. And I think also being put in leadership positions very like early on, I just, I had no choice but to learn and but yeah. to conquer it or else the, you know, well, you're replaceable. Like it's yeah, that yeah. simple, you know? So you see the moment. Yeah. Um, so the conversation with myself has definitely been different because, you know, the, the people I'm doing it for is just expanding and mm-hmm. getting bigger and wider range and not now just dancers, but aspiring models, aspiring young girls who just want to be influencers or on social media, yeah. you know, um, it's it's broadened a lot more, so the responsibility is higher, but it I feel like qualified, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm really, like I said, leaning in and enjoying the ride mm. and the growth spurt. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. Have there ever been moments of self doubt, self worth, and insecurity? That of course, you- of course, still, still to this day, you know, like. Me and one of my uh, co-founders of Be Greater Than, our wellness and lifestyle brand that we just launched, Randy, we discuss this all the time about like knowing our worth. And even Jasmine, too, she's the other founder as well. We talk about it all the time, like learning our worth, knowing it and like demanding it, basically not Mm -hmm. being afraid to say I'm worth this. I deserve this. I've earned this, Mm -hmm. you know, like the dance industry is such a um, closed off like gatekeeping world. They're like, I'm not gonna talk about my rate because that's like literally what you're taught. Like everyone gets paid different. Don't talk about your rates. That's what I was told immediately as soon as I stepped in this dance industry. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, like day one, you know? So it's, we're like taught to keep it secretive, but then that's how we don't know how to demand and like ask for our worth. Like we don't know what we're worth as dancers. And then once I started influencing, you know, influencers are like, girl, this brand has way more money. You should ask for a higher budget, you know, or a higher rate. Like it's just way more open Mm -hmm. and different, uh, communications, I guess. I don't know. It's so weird, but. So where did that come from? Did it come from like the people paying you, the producers or other dancers? Because that mindset could also just be like, I don't want to get hurt and realize I'm getting paid way less than you or vice versa. I think it's a toxic cycle of like it happening to someone else. And so then they keep their rate secretive and then say, you know, if I, if someone's paying me, you're paying me $5,000 to be here. And then I bring somebody with me as my assistant. I'm like, Oh, well they are only paying me $2,000 today. So I only have 500. Like it's that toxic cycle Mm. of that instead of just being like i'm getting five grand today so how much do you want or what's your rate or you know the 10 percent of that would be this you know yeah it's just a toxic cycle i think of it happening to people so then them doing it Mm -hmm. back and i want to change that especially in the dance community Mm. you know i want to be more open and i want people to like have these conversations because they're so necessary it's yeah it would make change but we have to like collectively all be Mm -hmm. on board you know but this does apply in all creative space it does it definitely does you know what's your rate on a mural x yeah holy cow what's your rate on this x like Mm -hmm. people don't realize or i've had people hey um can you i got a wall in my backyard my friends will see it it'll be great exposure do you want to come paint it yeah. I'm like, cool. What's your budget? They're like, well, I was thinking of giving you like 300 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, don't disrespect me. <laughs> I'm going to, sp- this is how I answer it now. I'm going to spend a thousand in just cost of paint. Mm-hmm. So you basically want me to, to pay, pay you to paint your backyard for part. the exposure. And you're not even on social media. Mm-hmm. If we're going to use that as a metric. Yeah. So it's like, and we forget those kinds of things because yeah. there's also, there is the opportunity of barter, like creative to creative. Of course. Hey, I'm doing this. Can we co-do something? We're all trying to get to this next level. Yeah, and but you when got it, a network across. Exactly. <laughs> you know, try building out a clothing line, getting it on the right people. You never know. Like all these things yeah. take into effect. Mm-hmm. But uh, the next question in this whole let's just say dancer, creative space, but you know, I'm in my forties now. 
Like I am feeling, and I've never felt ageism until I really started feeling it now. Mm. And like physically, I could go run a five and half minute mile. Yeah. Like I could still move those kinds of numbers, but it's like, why do we start feeling old now? Why do we start having these conversations in our head? And I know as dancers, because I've I've got a couple other dancer friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had another one on. I don't know if you know Candice. Yeah, Craig. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she, she's been on the show, but it's like you get to a point. I'm like, you've aged out. Yeah. And we're aging out at areas that, hello, we have 40, 50 years left. Like we're I not know. old. And, I know. I know. And it's healthy insane. and stronger than ever. Yeah. It's insane. I used to always say, too, like when I was younger and when I like first started dancing with Beyonce, say at 17, I would be like, I'm not about to be that 40 year old dancer. Like, you're not going to find me up there doing single ladies at 40, you know, and like I meant it. I definitely meant it because as we as I got older, I hit 30 and I'm like, what? I'm still up here doing single ladies. What is going on? (laughs) You know, And all of a sudden you're like, (laughs) I'm I'm like, oh, I'm about to be that girl. Hold on. We got to like not be like yeah. what are we doing to not be you know <laughs> so uh i don't know i don't know what we were talking about before that <laughs> lost my train of thought but no we we're just talking about <laughs> ageism in the industry yeah oh but my God. how that impacts like self-love conversations and insecurities in that capacity yeah and then the pressures of course for like women too to like always stay looking young and then pressure to have children if you don't have it yet have any yet like it's so much. Mm-hmm. It is so much. But I also feel, I feel like I am aging backwards because I take much better care of myself too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like there's <laughs> like also I have that knowledge now to be like, Ooh, I'm not going to do what I did in my twenties to myself. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, we're thriving. So yeah. And the only time <laughs> you feel the age is like, what's your date of birth? They're like, Oh yeah. And then everybody's like, wow, you're advanced. And it's yeah. Like, I'm, Bringing up these talks about insecurity and everything, and I think it's real important. If you're in this next stage of mentorship, mm-hmm. are there any specific examples where you were like down in the dark, like you were really depressed in the dumps about being insecure about something, about the conversations that attack our egos? Because I think, look, I've got a little girl coming, mm-hmm. right? And she's going to be born in April, maybe April 19th, like <laughs> maybe you. Maybe April 19th. And I'm really starting to, I've always been concerned, but like I'm getting even more concerned because now I'm going to see it firsthand yeah. and the impacts of social media and being on, you don't even have to be in the spotlight. You, no. It could be the thousand people that follow you. It doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. like, what are the things that we should be looking out for A, as men and fathers and peers and you in the mentorship role of like, what can we start saying to these, these young girls and young boys? My gosh, social media has just put a different tier into everything. It's crazy. I mean, I really think the relationships that you have are like what is what keeps you sane and Mm -hmm. like grounded and humble, even though we don't like using that word these (laughs) days anymore because it means to really dim your light. We're not trying to dim our light. We want to shine bright and share our light. But, you know, what was I saying? Um, it says something about being humble. <laughs> Where was I? The um, people you interact with. Your yeah, circles. the people you interact with. You know, you become kind of the company you keep. So like your family being solid and then like the chosen friends that we keep close in our circles. Like we really have to like make sure that's a solid group of folks you know that's what i feel like i've learned and so i try and teach my mentees that like just be careful of the people around you that you're allowing to have access to you so closely because it can just be toxic you know so toxic and fast you know the impressions that others have on us and Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't even realize how toxic it is sometimes until it's too late, until even if we notice late. it. Yeah, I've been there before. You know, I, I was in a pretty long relationship um, in my 20s and it was just like toxic. But I like was so invested in work. That was how I was like running away from all the toxic stuff in my mm-hmm. life. And eventually I had to like sit down and face it. And it was like, girl, you got to get your life together. And that was really, that's really like the turning point for me of me choosing me Mm. was like, I had gotten off that 2018 tour. 
I broke up with that fiance. It was a fiance at the time that mm. was just like not healthy. And then I made the choice and decision to pour into my own cup. That was in 2018, mm -hmm. end of 2018. And I've just, I feel like everyone can see it. Like it's noticeable, but also like feel my, the difference in yeah. me, you know? You're lighter. Yeah. Way lighter, way more positive. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, living through love. Yeah. <laughs> what did it take? What was the final straw for you to say, you know what, I'm going to take this me pill and I'm moving this forward? Was there a moment, a final back breaking event? I think it was so many, uh, like so many things. I had been on tour all year. After the tour ended, they added on Africa and India, mm. like very third world countries too that were difficult to stay in because it was booked so last minute. So our, our circumstances weren't the greatest to mm -hmm. say the least, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and it, we were all like so ready to go home and I was already on edge and, you know, it was just like that. And then like, when I went home, I went home to like some bullshit <laughs> and I was like, yeah. ah! <laughs> you know, You're like, like, I'm supposed to come home to peace, not yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And so it was just all of that, like, wipe the slate clean. Let me just, like, start over. Like, that was, I guess, that was it for mm -hmm. me. The Yeah. Just the culmination of all of that. Culmination of all of it. And touring is a lot, as I'm sure you can imagine, you know. It's just so much being gone from home and family and loved ones that long and living out of a suitcase and being mm -hmm. in different time zones and not sleeping and always rehearsing. And, you know, it can just be so much. You're like, yeah, you forget where home is. Yeah. And you forget like what's important to you, you know, cause you're just like going, 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 trying to get the job done, mm -hmm. you know? So how do you stay grounded amongst all of that? Or were you just not? <laughs> I don't think I was grounded. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got grounded in like 2019, 2020, yeah. you know? <laughs> so the pandemic was your blessing, yes, your coming out. the pandemic out. was like, I'm like, can we do that like every five years? That right? would be like this gave Ashley her wings. Iconic, it wasn't yeah. the Red Bull. Yeah, it wasn't the Red Bull. It was the pandemic. Yeah, it was great for me. Awesome. I know it was like very black or white for people. Either you know, or we, we talk about living through love, right? We talk about operating from love or operating from fear, choosing the lens you watch it through. Mm -hmm. So I know it affected a lot of people. Yeah. Everyone. It affected everyone in one way or the other. Yeah. But we all have the choice and we can have the choice to completely be victimized by it. Mm -hmm. Or... What am I going to shift, pivot into, and take an opportunity here? Yeah. And we all have that opportunity also. And mm -hmm. I get it. We're at different levels. Yeah. You know, luckily, I didn't have any kids during the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? We got pregnant at the tail end of it. Yeah. I couldn't imagine what it would have been like with two teenagers or something. Or like, something, pfft. yeah. Mm -hmm. But Or working for someone too. and getting laid off or whatever the case is. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. think it's how we choose to view it. Totally. I agree. And to me, I thought it was a blessing. And at first I loved it. My wife and I, we binged watched, we rewatched like everything. It was just like oh Matrix, God, Lord endless. of the Rings, Marvel, like you name, let's start yeah. this all over. What are we gonna do? Yeah. But after you clean out all the wine and all the pizza and you're like, Yeah. Whoa, whoa this ten pounds of fluff, this ain't gonna <laughs> cut it. Well, yeah. there's no gyms. I start working out in my driveway. Yeah. Start doing 20 minutes of lunges. Me and my boyfriend lunges. started working out at the park. We had like a whole like park group. There were like 20 of us at one point. It was so great. Yeah. And then after you, you get. made me fall in love with fitness. And then, you know. There you, like, you go. You fall in love with other things mm -hmm. if you just explore a little. So I think a lot of this is in many cases and why we have these conversations is we can look back. And I don't believe in looking or living in regret. Me either, yeah. Because we can always say shoulda, coulda, woulda. I shouldn't have dated that person. I, mm -hmm. sh I shouldn't have said no to Renaissance Tour. I should have said no a long time ago. Like, we mm -hmm. can't control any of that. Right. And then we'll just live in and wallow in it. Mm -hmm. But instead, we look at that and be like, this is what I learned from that toxic relationship. Yeah. This is what I learned from failing. And if Lessons. we move forward... That's the only way that that lesson actually becomes a success. Yeah. And everything is perspective. And you have to choose, like you said, to look at it from a positive perspective or a perspective that can help you mm -hmm. or, you know, make you grow. Mm -hmm. Not the negative. That, that was another thing, too. I had to take a look in the mirror and then 
realized that the the company I was keeping was very negative, you know? And I'm mm. like, well, it's a reflection of me. So like, we got to change myself mm -hmm. and then everyone will like sprinkle out and like fade away and the leaves will fall off, which they did. And I like manifested a, I, was, I kept saying, I was like, I want to be, I want mutually beneficial relationships. I want to learn something from the people too. I want to feel like they're pouring into my cup and not just me pouring out mm -hmm. of mine. Like, and I manifested that. Like I, yeah you, just being intentional and yeah and yeah. service to each other service to each other it's a big one yeah so this journey of self-love how would you define self-love self-love is broad you know it's it, it's there's so many different forms of self-love but how would i define it hmm i would define it as in everything you do, everything you do, like everything, like com me coming here to do this, I'm like, okay, how is it pouring into me mm -hmm. still? You know? So I would, I guess I would define it like that. Like every little thing you're doing, making sure that it is still benefiting you in mm. a positive way with love. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting. I've never framed it as a question to myself, right? Mm. And many of us, I think, believe self-love is, oh, I'm going to get a massage today. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to get a facial. That's all surface level self-love. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know? I know. And that's why I'm like, it's like a lifestyle like shift. It's a lifestyle mind shift of being intentional and, yeah, being intentional. Saying no to the 17th birthday party of the week, not because you don't love the person. Yeah. Boundaries. Yeah. You know, healthy boundaries. All of that comes with like age and experience and stuff too. Lessons mm -hmm. and failures and all of that. Taking care of the FOMO bug. Yeah. Oh my God. I used to be the FOMO queen. What? Oh my gosh. And I would just be out doing it because I didn't want to miss out. And I'm yeah. like, I hate it here. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get there first so you don't miss anything yeah. and leave last so you don't leave miss anything. Leave last. And then you're exhausted tomorrow. It's like, ugh. No, I feel you. Yeah. That was me for a long time. So asking the question, how is this serving me? How is this pouring into me? Mm -hmm. And how I'm going to use it as a benefit? Because I think in many cases, self-love is selfishness. And we're talking about selfishness in a good... In a good way. You know, and a lot of times we think we are either giving of ourselves or, or not serving ourselves, but we can serve ourselves in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And we just should. keeping that top of mind. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, as a parent, I know, and talking to other mothers, I know a lot of mothers believe in like sacrificial love and like, hey, I'm going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to sacrifice my self-love. I'm going to sacrifice mm -hmm. going out with the boys because like I have to be with my kids mm -hmm. or I can't give me time. And I think it's so important to consistently remember there is me time. It's super important. It's yeah. also your life. 100%. And how do we move that forward? And that's the only way you can be good in life for the people around you. You know, or else you're like me a few years back when everything was just like toxic, you know, and it like turns you into that. And when you're not naturally even that kind of person, mm -hmm. like... But if you're not pouring into yourself, you can lose your authentic self. So what's a greater dance position than the captain of Beyonce, right? Right. The, the, you know, there's a few that get to that level and that's ambitious. And, mm -hmm. and did ambition ever take you over? Did you ever step on people to get to that point? And now in your reframed, refreshed you, where does ambition place the role in self-care? Because you, you, you're starting a new company. You mm -hmm. have this new brand that you want to put out there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we allow our ambitions to maybe take away from the self-care because mm -hmm. we're like, yo, we want to get there. Let me, uh, let me ignore that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm definitely one who has to constantly practice the self-care because I can easily dive into like work, grind, tunnel vision mode. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to remind myself to have balance uh, so I can be better in my work because I realize it just makes me more efficient and productive if I am, you know. Um, mm, what was the first part of your question again? Let me go back. Ambition. <laughs> yes, ambition. 
I think it's important to stay ambitious. You know, it keeps you striving mm -hmm. for more. Um, balancing that with self-care, it's just being intentional. I think for me, I, I have to be. So ambition can sometimes be at odds with self-care. Mm -hmm. How do you strike a balance between pursuing your goals and ensuring that your well-being mentally and emotionally remain a priority? Both of them need to be prioritized, ambition and self-care, because I love ambition and I love to work. I really do love to work. Um, and I have to just remind myself to be intentional with my balance because I'm a better worker when I have self-care. Mm -hmm. Which is counterintuitive because many of us think we have to sacrifice everything for our ambition, for our hustle, for I the know. grind. I know, and we do. And then it can be, you're not, you know, a big word of mine this year has been maximizing, mm. maximizing the time and the space in everything because people's time is the most important thing to them. So we have to maximize it and everything. Even if it's, it's resting, I'm like maximizing the rest time, like intentionally putting my phone down and turning off the TV or whatever mm -hmm. it is that I need in that moment, just trying to fully maximize that. So I feel like that goes hand in hand with maximizing the self-care time so then you can maximize the work time mm -hmm. later on. You know what I mean? Just all is one big melting pot of a constant dance that you have to do it's like a tango yeah yeah no and i love that because <laughs> maximizing is growth it's expansion and you brought up rest because that's one of the conversations i had with my coach last week or the week before because sometimes i'll rest or want to rest or know i need to rest but then i feel guilty for I resting. i do too i do too but then i'm and like, like a whole day off if i like don't edit or something i feel like i wasted the day and it's like that's ah! the conversation i'm having but like he still feel like that <laughs> he's walking me through everything and he's like but if you don't rest are you performing those tasks at the best, mm -hmm. are you actually 100%? Are you full energy? Are you even present? Yeah, are you even present? Because presence is a big thing. You so know? I ended up taking a whole day off. Good job. Yeah. Now, next a week. Ooh. I, I didn't guilt <laughs> myself. Well, I, I was two weeks in Europe, though, but I didn't really frame it as rest yeah and when we travel we're always on the go taking so vacations much vacations are not like rest I because need... you want to do things i just was in bali for like 10 days too and it was not resting but it was very fun mm -hmm. you know and we did a lot so what's next for you what what is it what's the legacy of ashley where's the continuance where's the path so i feel like i am in my like purpose phase you know and i just recently launched the brand be greater than mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle and wellness brand really just encouraging people to pour into themselves not forget about self-love and you know leave leave enough for yourself at the end of the day after the job that we do for other people and the work that we do and whatever our careers are mm -hmm. still pouring into self and really discovering our highest potential you know so, so what is this what is this looking like? So we have a soft launch coming up this weekend. I'm not sure if this will even air before that or not, but we'll be in Atlanta for our first soft launch. We'll get a lot of content. We're doing everything from like breath work. We're doing a little movement session. I don't want to call it a dance session because I think dance can sound intimidating for people yeah. who don't like to dance or don't dance. So it's a movement confidence building session. Mm. Um, I said breath work, some meditations, we're having panelists talk, we're doing, um, we have a chef coming in and curating a nice menu for the guests, some drinks, some juices, you know, everything wellness and self-care. We'll talk about skincare and self-care from the outside mm -hmm. all the way to the inside, you know. And, uh, and we'll eventually also, sorry not to cut you off, we'll eventually have one we want to plan on having one here in March in LA. So that'll be our like big launch. The so, big launch. Mm -hmm. And it's men the, and women. Everyone is welcome. So you'll have to come because I'll it aligns come. with your brand. I'm into wellness. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> so with so many competing wellness brands and lifestyles and what what is your niche? What is your target? How are you going to 
differentiate yourselves? You know, I think everyone can relate to being um, like associated with something and they feel like they're more than that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the title became Be Greater Than Mm -hmm. is Be Greater Than a podcast host, be greater than a dancer that people only want to think I'm only a dancer or something, you know, be greater than your insecurities, be greater Mm -hmm. than your fears, be greater than your traumas, everything being just being greater than any, you know, title that someone put on you that you might've put on yourself or any past anything. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone can just relate to that. It's very like relatable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what differentiates us. It's not like we're trying to shove down like, you know, anything down anybody's throat. It's really just like, let's start this community together and pour into ourselves Mm -hmm. together though. Like, ourselves together <laughs> uplift and inspire mm-hmm. Yeah, because in many cases we have our own limiting beliefs yeah and we're like yeah that sounds cute be greater than like they can be greater but this is me my circumstance right you know but how do we get through that yeah you know and it could be be greater than it could be live through love it could be you know whatever you're listening to out in the world mm-hmm. all the different shows and podcasts and at the end of the day if we create bigger circles of people trying to be better than. Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to change the world yeah. and, and make us a better place. And I think humanity is too divided. Yeah, still. You know, and unfortunately, we're divided by skin color. We're divided mm-hmm. by gender. We're divided by where we politics. Live. And yeah. where we, all the things, mm-hmm. right? And at the end, the, if we take that all out, I'm like, if I cut you, you're going to bleed, right? Yeah. Is your blood red? Yeah. Yeah, is it going to hurt? Yeah, you might be a little upset. Yeah. Like all like we you do that all, to anyone. We're mm-hmm. all going to feel the same way. So like why can't we get back to the root of what we are? We're yeah. here to love and be loved. Yeah. And we want to grow together. We want to build community together and uplift and inspire, like you said. Mhm. 100%. <laughs> so how do you define love? I think love is a It's also a lifestyle, you know, you have to like live it, be it and, and speak it all of the things. You can't just speak it. You can't just be it. Sometimes you, it has to be in you. An embodiment. Embodiment. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how I would describe it. (laughs) And if you were to elaborate, once you embody it, then what is it? Freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Self-freedom. And there's nothing greater than feeling that. Mm-mm. Feels like the sky is the limit. You know, like when people back in the day used to say and you didn't really get it, you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. But then you like get it. <laughs> you're like, oh, it is. We can do whatever we want. We can manifest whatever. We can become whatever we mm-hmm. want. And really, that really clicking I just hope Powerful. people realize that sooner than later. I do too. Because we know as kids, we had that. Yeah. Right? It, that did not. We came with that wired and somewhere it goes away. It does. Somewhere we're stifled. And mm-hmm. it's like schooling, whatever system we want to talk about. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, 22, sky is the limit. 37, oh, oh 52. Now oh, now I get it. Yeah. Hopefully not on our deathbed though. I know. I want people to learn it sooner than me too Mm -hmm. you know that's what this is all about is sharing it to people so we can change and help people and make help try and make their life better Mm -hmm. (laughs) right that's all we're trying to do here yeah now final question there's no right answer wait before i do this scratch that isaac Mm. um do you know what the dictionary definition of love is what is it? Tell me, because I have not looked it up in a very long time. So A strong feeling of affection. That is it. Wow. That is There's like... There's so much more to love than mm-hmm. that. Hmm. That's the problem. That's why I'm trying to rebrand it here. Put yeah. it out in the world. Yeah. Yeah, there's way more to love no. than that. A strong feeling of affection. That is a portion of love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
but that's romantic love that's on the surface that's because there's also a point where like let's say you've been married for 50 years mm-hmm. you know you're ingrained in each other's dna but but there is more than affection that's keeping that together absolutely 100 percent. right yeah it's a choice love is a choice too it's a verb mm-hmm. it's a tool mm-hmm. yeah yeah all those things so ashley Yes. Final question. (laughs) Okay. How do you define living a life through love? Living a life through love is choosing to add love into my daily lifestyle in the best and positive way possible. How was that? <laughs> there's no score on this thing. Yeah, so there's no, there, yeah, there's no right or wrong, right? You tell me. We're printing that. Is that good? Yeah, I I think so. so I don't the, know what in I the said, live, but... In the Live Through Love dictionary, we're going to have Ashley's answer. I'm sure you put. have many better answers, but... No, no I one's better like than the other. I feel like that's what came from the heart. <laughs> that's all that mattered. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on, for being here. Thank you for having for, me and for this platform to encourage people to live through love and always just walk with love on their little shoulder because we need more people doing that yeah. in the world. Choose it every single day, every single moment. Yeah. And forgive yourself for when you don't because we are yeah. humans, we are fallible. And even the best of us are going to have a bad day. Absolutely. And understanding that as well that people have bad days and having grace and grace with yourself Mm -hmm. yeah we're not perfect thank you so much no just human we're imperfectly perfect and perfectly perfect that's right (laughs) well but we are just human and that's the most important thing and just always trying to put one foot in front of the other and do better and be greater than and live through love period maximize be greater than live through love all of it (laughs) there you go and where can everyone find you You can find me on all social media platforms, Ashley C.M. Everett. Everyone thinks it's Ashley Mick Everett, but it's C.M. Everett. (laughs) Well, we'll make sure we link that up properly. Yeah, thanks. And uh, it's Ruben, are you B-E-N? Not the sandwich. A lot of people put extra letters in my name. Oh, yeah, I could see that. So I understand your... uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. dilemma or whatever that would be, yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to Live Through Love. If you love this episode, you'll love this episode.